I'm very bullish on this platform. I think that there's a lot of opportunity to be had here. And one of my main things that I love about it is once you spend the time to actually go through and create the listings, you might be slow in the beginning. It might take you a little bit of time, maybe like five minutes to create a listing and actually put it up on Etsy, which isn't that long. And as you do more and more, you'll get a lot better at it and they'll go a lot smoother and a lot faster. But once you create the listings, it's completely hands off, okay? Your listings are gonna sit there, they're gonna get you sales, and obviously you have to answer messages if you get them here and there, which seem to be a little bit more rare on Etsy as compared to like a platform like Facebook Marketplace, for example, but then it's completely hands off. The company that we're gonna use is gonna take care of everything from the stock monitoring, processing your actual order and shipping it to the customer. They're gonna grab the actual order, the address from within your Etsy account, ship it to the customer, and then also after that, they're gonna input the tracking number their cells, okay? So you're gonna connect all this stuff from, from the software to Etsy, and they're gonna take care of everything for you. That's why I love it. Now, with Canva specifically, it's really easy. There's two things, there's two main things that I create and I've been playing around with other things, but we're gonna keep it simple in this tutorial. We're either gonna create mugs, right? So print on demand mugs or print on demand t-shirts. Now those are the two easiest things to get into, the two you know quickest and shortest barriers to entry. So that's why in this beginner tutorial, I'm gonna actually go ahead and teach you those. That said, once you get half decent at it and you have a little bit of skill involved after doing a few listings, you might wanna move into a different niche or a different type of product that doesn't necessarily have a lot of competition. An example of that would be like printed bags, right? Or another great example would be like printed hand towels. I've seen those kind of flying off the shelves lately. And so this works very, very well, but you don't just want to stay in the t-shirt and mug niche because that's where everyone starts. If you don't want to use Canva, I highly recommend using Photoshop. It's not that expensive to get started. I forget how much it actually is because this is just something I don't even pay attention to anymore. Obviously I, I subscribe to Adobe, so I think it's like 20 bucks a month for Lightroom Photoshop. I really don't pay attention to it anymore. So don't hold me to that specific number, but it's not expensive. It's highly worth it. So what you can do with Photoshop is it's going to allow you to, to create better designs overall. It's going to give you a lot more freedom to actually create the designs, a lot more, you know, freedom to move things around, create your own PNG images. So you can like take something out and put it on whatever color background you want. Whereas something like Canva, however, you're really only limited to specific color backgrounds in my experience. So I'm going to walk you through tutorials with both of those. But the very first thing that you need to do is you need to actually connect your Etsy account to Printful. Now, I'm not going to lengthen this tutorial because there's so many other YouTube videos out there that will show you literally just once you sign up for an Etsy account, once you sign up for a Printful account, how do you connect the two? It's super easy. And Printful actually has their own videos when you're connecting in and you're signing up to connect to Etsy for you. It's going to show you how to do it. It's actually very, very simple. Now, assuming that you've already completed that step and you're, you have an Etsy account, you have a Printful account, and they are both connected to each other, now you can get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is you can't just create a design based on anything, right? What you want to do, just like you want to do when you're drop shipping on any platform, is you want to go out there and you want to figure out different types of products that are already selling well. So there's a number of different ways to actually go ahead and find hot selling products on Etsy, but just like any website where you're drop shipping, the products are what's going to move the needle the most. And so the products that you're listing, you want to make sure have high demand or at least a high chance of selling and proven to be sold on this on the platform in the past. So we're going to go to Etsy and we're going to use an incognito browser to kind of browse around so it doesn't you know, suggest me certain things based on what it thinks I like. We want to see what it looks like to a normal person with no data stored in Etsy. So the first thing that you can do is you can start typing things into the search bar and the first keyword potentially that you type in will start yielding you ideas. And basically what you want to do is you want to find one of two things. You either want to find a hot selling product that looks like it has sales in the past and you can do that by browsing around and finding one yourself or you want to find a seller that has a lot of sales history that's a good seller and start kind of, you know, mimicking their successful products. It's just like you would sniping on any other platform. This is the most successful way to do it. So since St. Patty's Day was yesterday, what's the next type of holiday or season that we can go after? Let's say spring, for example. So let's type in spring and you see spring wreath, spring wreath uh, for front door, spring decor, spring press on nails. And typing keywords into the search bar like this will actually show you different ideas going forward of what Etsy thinks you're looking for based on what other people are already looking for on the platform. So that's one way to do it. What I'm gonna do to accelerate that process just for the sake of the tutorial is type in something like, spring, like funny spring t-shirt. And we're going to make a t-shirt. And the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for products that are already selling. So you see that this one says popular now. We can check that one out. If it's ranked high, then you also could check that out. Or if it says star seller, then you could look into the seller. But let's just open a couple of these tabs and we'll start looking through. So let's open what part of this don't you understand? 
Um, my peeps might be an interesting one for Easter coming up. This one might be an interesting one. Hello spring might be an interesting one. And you can go down what you want to do basically before you actually create these is actually search that to make sure that there's not a lot of other competition out there. Whereas like there's 50 other shirts just like this. So this one's the first one we're going to check out. This one says it's popular now. So the very first thing that we're going to do is men's tea, chocolate, bunny, talking, funny, Easter holiday. We're going to search that into the Etsy search bar. So we're going to come back here. It's actually a new tab. Oh, forgot we're in the incognito browser. Search that in the search bar and make sure that there's not a bunch of, of t-shirts just like this. And you see that there are a, a large number of t-shirts like this, but nothing crazy that you, you know, potentially couldn't rank for. I see maybe eight of them. So there's space here to rank for this actual keyword. A good example of this might be something that's a little bit more, you know, surefire with like a specific title. And you'll type that title into the search bar and you'll see that there's like an entire first page of pretty much the same shirt with just slightly different lettering and slightly different colors. So that is not the case for this one. So this one could be an interesting idea. So the next thing that you could do is you can come down and you could reverse engineer the seller's best listings if the seller obviously has a lot of experience. So this is a popular shirt. We're gonna actually mimic this shirt as well, but you can also see that it's sold by Extra Fly Apparel who has over 23,000 sales here and they're five stars on the platform. So we're gonna open up their store and we're gonna start looking through their best product. So they actually have a lot of different products, but what we're basically looking for here is something that's gonna say, hot selling product or showing us that there is a lot of sales. You could also go down at their most recent reviews and see which of their products are actually selling well. So to give you an example of how we're gonna recreate the shirt, you can either use Canva or you can use Photoshop. For this specific tutorial, I'm gonna use Photoshop because that's what I like, but Canva is just as easy. It's really, really simple to play around with. And if you need to learn Canva, you can probably learn Canva in like 15, 20 minutes by watching a simple tutorial. So we're simply gonna recreate something just like this, but maybe put our own spin on it. So we're gonna find chocolate looking bunnies just like this. All right, so we found an image very, very similar. And now we're just going to download the image and we're going to rip those bunnies out of the picture. We'll just save the image. We'll bring it open in Photoshop. And specifically with Photoshop t-shirts, you want them to be 4,500 by 5,400. Those are the best dimensions to create on an image for a t-shirt. So you'll see this is going to be like the main part of the t-shirt. Now we know what we're working with. So we're going to open that picture that we just downloaded with the bunnies, simply quick select it, which means we're just gonna take the bunnies out of the original picture. And now we're just gonna quick select the bunnies and grab them from the image. So now we have the bunnies. One tip that I will give you is make sure that you utilize all of the space that you have in this actual frame. You don't want a little design on a big t-shirt unless that's what you're actively going for. Now I also went to Google and we're gonna open up two speech boxes really fast. I just downloaded those off Google as well. And we're gonna need to select these with the quick selection tool just like we did before. Now that we quick selected it, we're going to just drag it over. And now we're going to do the same thing with the other one, just quick select it. And now we've pretty much replicated the shirt. We just need to add some text there. All right. And there we go. We pretty much replicated the shirt. So what we basically did is we took these images off Google. We put them in there. We then found some speech tabs. We literally wrote my butt hurts. And then we change it up a little bit with instead of saying what, He's got like the shocked or like the, I don't even know what you would call that face, but we put that emoji in there to kind of switch it up. And that's pretty much what the original shirt looks like. We just kind of put our own spin on it. Now, before you actually upload this, because unless you're uploading this to a white shirt, and even if you are uploading it to a white shirt background, the whites might not still be the same color. You can also learn these basics of Photoshop super fast within like a, a quick course or something like that. It won't take you very long. Canva is a lot easier to use, but again, you can't rip the actual picture out with PNG like I'm about to show you. So if this was your t-shirt and you were using like Canva, you'd have to put this on a white background because you can't remove the background. If you are on Photoshop, one of the benefits of that is that you can just hide the background now and then it turns into a PNG and you can save this picture and then put it on whatever background shirt you want. So we're going to export this now as the PNG. And now what you want to do is you want to go back into Printful. You're going to go to your stores. You're going to go to add a product and now you're going to find a t-shirt. So you can type in t-shirt here. I know where they are. So I'm just going to go to men's clothing or this might even be better for women's clothing, t-shirts. A lot of them are unisex anyway. And you can see on the side here on Printful, all the different things that you're able to drop ship. And then right here, we're gonna actually put our design in. So it's DTG printing. We're gonna drop the design in there and bam, there it's on the shirt. We can actually see what it looks like on the actual shirt. And so now what you wanna do is you wanna select all the potential colors and sizes that you can, which is why it was important for us to actually make that a PNG image in the first place. Because if we didn't, we could only really put it on a white background because then it would be a white square 
hair on a different color shirt and it would look terrible. So we're gonna select all the colors that we can and obviously it limits you to a certain variance. So we're gonna take out 4XL, 5XL, We'll take out XS, we'll take out 3XL, and then we're gonna remove some of these other colors right here, not white though. And there we go. So now we offer it in all these sizes and all these specific colors. I took a lot of the darker colors out because I don't know that this would look too good on a dark shirt. A lot of people for Easter anyway are probably gonna get these lighter colors or something along those lines. But now look at all the variations that we offer and all the variations that we can drop ship of this specific shirt to other people and we don't have to hold any of that inventory. You can see it's gonna show you all the different mock-ups. So what you can do is you can use an active live mock-up. They have part of the Printful software shows you what it looks like on an actual person. And that obviously can help you a lot of ways when you're trying to sell the t-shirt because people are gonna visualize themselves wearing the t-shirt and now you don't have to because this is literally gonna be your listing. What I've seen to work best for me, honestly, is not the live mock-ups, although you can use them, test them both out. I've seen that like normally just like the laying down kind of ones work the best, but again, test them both. I have sold plenty of shirts and mugs where it's like the lifestyle image. So I'm going to use the spring summer vibes mock-up and here we go. So you can't see what the shirt looks like here, but it will when it actually uploads onto Etsy. So now what we need is we need the product title and the description. Okay. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to go through and check to see what the bottom one looks like uh, because the bottom one on Printful often will say something along the lines of manufactured in whatever the country is. I always delete that. The next thing I do is I'm going to go back and what I'm going to do for the sake of saving time is just copy their specific listing because I'm not actually, actually going to list this. And then I'm going to paste it in here to get all the potential keywords that they potentially rank for on the platform. Now, what you want to do once you do this is you want to switch this up a little bit, right? So you don't want to say their exact title. You want to switch it up. You just want to use the majority of their main keywords. So I'm going to paste this in here. I'm also going to see if their description says anything. So they don't really have any good keywords in their description. So that's a way that we can improve ours. Women's, since we made a women's shirt, women's chocolate bunnies, talking funny Easter holiday short sleeve, t-shirt, bunny, rabbit, funny egg hunt, spring, t-shirt, t shirt t short sleeve. The next thing you're going to want to do is the tag. So just like you would on any other website, you want to come up with some good tags that are going to actually help you get visibility on the platform. And now's the fun part. Now you get to see what you can actually make. So for whatever reason, I need to reboot my actual print full because it's not working, but usually it estimates your profit margin here on the sides. So it'll tell you if you like you list this for 15 bucks, here's what you'll make on the actual t-shirt. You also want to take into account what everyone else is selling this for. So they're selling it for 1099. That does not mean you need to sell it that low. What I would do is I would take this in to Etsy again, see what everybody else is selling it for, and then pick somewhere in the middle. When you're starting out and you don't have a lot of reviews, you want to sell on the lower end to get some reviews and some social proof. This is true on any platform that you drop ship on. As you build those reviews, you build more store notoriety, you get more sales, you can start raising your prices because then obviously people will buy from you uh, with the no like and trust factor. And there you go. Now it's publishing it to your store. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do when you actually go into Etsy is you have to go back into your Etsy store and then publish the actual listing. It will be in draft mode.